In this video, I want to discuss your options for setting up field validation for validating your user's data entry into fields as they're actually keying in information. Now, there's a number of ways of actually doing field validation, especially now in more modern versions of the FileMaker platform. In this video, we're going to cover the original old school method of doing field validation. If you're looking for a video on how to do validation with script triggers, you'll need to consult our FileMaker Pro video training course that you can purchase online that's available now. We cover this topic and many more just like it. So I'm in a copy of FM starting point right here. And the first thing to understand is that auto enter options and validations at the field level have been around for a long time. You can go to file down to manage over to database, and then you can select a field. Now, of course, here we have the validation options here and the auto enter options are something that we discussed in a previous video. Now, before I get into explaining the validation options here, let me give you a bit of perspective at the 20,000 foot view. Both the auto enter options here and the validation options here, once turned on for a particular field, apply to that field everywhere within the database. And of course, off the cuff, you might think, well, yeah, that's a good thing. But if you want the validations to be specific on a particular layout and maybe not on other layouts, then this isn't necessarily a good thing. Some of the auto enter options here are really, really important, specifically the serial number generation here and the creation of date and time and modification date and time are absolutely critical to the stability and robustness of the FileMaker platform. The validation tab right here, from my perspective, in a lot of ways is kind of old school. But for some people, this is still their preferred way of performing validations. And let me explain by what I mean. Just a moment ago, I said that applying the changes here applies everywhere. Well, if you don't want to apply a validation everywhere, then turning on something here might force an undesired validation to occur in certain layouts where you have no need or no intention of enforcing that validation. Maybe you have a strict validation in a certain section where you have a very low level user that you have less trust over and you want to strictly enforce them to do something. But maybe you have a different layout, which is accessed by a more trusted user or maybe by a system administrator where you want to give them broader range access to that data. In which case, applying a validation here will be potentially problematic. That's why generally for the development that I personally do, I try to use the more modern script triggers to set up those validations. Now, to be perfectly clear, writing script triggers to do validation is more technically demanding. Once again, that's why I'm giving you the 20,000 foot view here. Setting up this tab here to perform validations is technically much simpler and easier to do, but it gives you less flexibility in setting up and executing your validations. Using the newer script triggers that are part of the FileMaker platform gives you greater flexibility, but they require a higher degree of technical skill and ability, so you have to possess a higher degree of knowledge and expertise. It's just a matter of who you are and what your background is as to which type of validation you might want to use. So now that you understand that there's really two types of validations that you can set up, let's show you the basic types of validation right here. Now, first off to understand is that the validation options right here are to some degree variable depending upon the type of field that you have over here. So for example, text fields will have certain types of validations that are available and that will be somewhat different than the validation options that are available for a container. The validation options for a container will be much more restrictive, but in one area, kind of cool. So first off, let's start with something simple, both the text and number validations. I'm going to go and click on uh, the category field right here. Take a look at this. I'm going to press options. Now, one thing about the validation at the top, we can specify that the validation only occurs during data entry or always. 
This primarily has to do when you're going and importing data from like an Excel spreadsheet or some sort of scenario like that. You can force a validation to occur during the import. Now, this can get frustrating if during the import, certain fields don't pass, then those records of information will be skipped during the import. But the import itself will continue to completion as a general rule. Also, you have the option right here to allow the user to override the validation warning if they're presented with it. Here are the validation rules that you can test for. You can have a strict data type, and these are fairly narrow in nature. You can test that you have a numeric only. You can test that you have a four-digit year or a time of day. Now, more interesting is that you can test to make sure that a field is not empty. You can test to make sure the field is unique, which means that no other record in the database with that specific field has the value that you just input. So the value that you just input is completely unique. Now, executing this right here does place a slight overhead or load on the computer while it performs this activity. Just keep this in mind. This right here, not empty, is real easy for FileMaker to perform. This unique value option does take a little bit of overhead and does take a little bit of hit in performance for it to perform. Existing value means exactly that. The value that's in there has to be one that's already existing somewhere in the database. Once again, in a similar fashion to unique, there is a little bit of a performance hit in using this checkbox right here. With a small database or with a limited number of users, that's fine. If you have a database with 100 users and 10 or 20 gigabytes of data, this might be more of an issue, especially if you're accessing the database over a wide area network. If you're in California and the database is in New York, this might be a problem. You might actually notice a stutter or pause while this validation occurs. The next option is members of a value list. Of course, you can select from existing value lists that are built within your database. The value list can be anything, type of project, project status, anything like that. So they have to select a value from an existing value list. If they tried to do something outside the value list, they get a warning message. You can also specify that the data that's input is within a specific date range or mathematical range. This could be valuable. If you are asking to input data in a certain date range, you can make sure it's between 2, 10, 19, 80, all the way to 10, 10, 2010. All these are options for FileMaker to check. Now, the most flexible option right here, and once again, this is a very similar option to what you get when you start dealing with validation by script trigger, is a validation by calculation, where you actually get to write any type of calculation that you want to validate whether the data contained within the field is accurate. Whatever formula that you think makes it valid, it could be anything. So we've talked about the calculation engine before. Once again, here's the calculation engine. If you can dream up a formula or some sort of set of criteria that makes something valid or invalid, it can be built into this calculation engine right here. Now, of course, we can also specify the maximum number of characters they can put in the document. You might say they can't put more than 250 characters in the document, but that's kind of weird because most people don't think in those terms. If someone says, give me a paragraph of data, they'll say, make sure that it's 80 words or less. They don't normally tell you make it 351 characters or less. So optionally here, you'd love to see a checkbox that says 80 words or less. But since that doesn't exist, in order to do something like 80 words or less, you'd have to come back up here to validate by calculation, and you'd have to come up with your own function that calculates the number of words. And right here is a function down here called word count. Then you'd have to specify the formula. I think we're using category. And if the category 
say is less than 80 words. Simple. I say, okay. I say, that's great. Allow user to specify this. Now we can also put a custom dialogue right here. I say, okay. I say, okay. So we're going to have it do a custom dialogue. Sounds good. I go in here. I start typing a sentence. This is the test of the emergency broadcasting system. Okay, it likes that. So I'm going to copy that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine words. I'll make it 10 words. System airwaves. So there's 10 words. Okay. So copy that. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So it likes 70. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to insert right here another 10 characters. And I'm going to click out. Well, now I've gone over my maximum number of words. I can't have more than 80 words. You need less than 80 words. So I can revert the record back to its current status. Reverting all the changes to this record since it was last entered. You can say revert, and there you go. So you get the general idea of how this works. The idea is that you can go into field validation and create a very simple validation. You can do the pre-can validations they have, or wire up your own validation by calculation. And even in this situation, I've shown you how to do your own word count, which is a very popular restriction that people place on all sorts of paperwork all the time. So once again, it's word count and the field, and then it's going to be less than, or maybe less than or equal, and then some number. So there you go. And once again, you can also put your own custom message in here, which is generally going to be way better for your users than FileMaker's generic message. The FileMaker generic message, I find, is generally hard to follow, for me anyway, and it's also going to be hard for your users to follow because the terms that FileMaker uses are like the field that you've been interacting with is outside the parameters of the data that you've been inputting, and you might want to think about uh, retrofitting the data so that it is in compliance with the data or something like that. And so it'd be better just to say, yo, you need less than 80 words, a much cleaner UI. One last thing, it's kind of cool. If you're actually dealing with container fields, you can actually click on a container and hit options and hit validation. Most of the options are not available. You still have the ability to detect if it's not empty, which is great. But down here at the bottom where you had the maximum number of characters, it's now the maximum number of kilobytes or the maximum size of the document you can drop in there. That's kind of cool. So this kind of takes on a customized validation spin, per se, if you will, once it becomes a container. Now, again, you can do all this certainly and to a much greater degree with a lot more flexibility using script triggers and scripts within the FileMaker platform. But if you want something quick and dirty, and if you're okay with it applying everywhere for a field, not just on certain layouts, but everywhere universally, then this validation option here in field definitions is the way to go.